I've never seen anything like it before, and to attempt to hit the ball out of there is pure madness. The winner of the gold medal and the champion golfer of the year is Cameron Smith. This is the one that I've always wanted to win since I was a little kid. So it just feels pretty amazing to be able to get it done today. Uh, it's amazing that it's my destiny to be the first Aussie to win. Just incredible. Hello and welcome to the first episode of Playing From The Tips, the new show from Golf Australia magazine, previewing all the golf action from around the world, with some insights from our so-called experts who will also offer their picks for the week as to who might win. My name is Jimmy Emanuel, I'm the Deputy and Digital Editor of Golf Australia magazine, and joining me on this journey for the first week are two interesting characters from the world of golf. First, Mr. Golf Podcast himself and everyone's favourite Monday morning columnist, Rod Murray. Welcome, Rod. To be a guest finally, Jimmy, much less work for me. I hope to make you actually work quite a lot more, but that's <laughs> I'm quite sure okay. You do. It'll be a battle of the giants. And now for someone completely different, we welcome a man known more for his hot takes on paths, watches, and golf movies than tournaments. Who's mm. turning over the a new leaf? stuff. Yep. Yeah, the important <laughs> stuff. That's right. Turning over a new leaf this week is Adrian Logue. Logue, welcome. Thank you very much, Jimmy. I look forward to hearing you actually talk something that people are interested in for a change. Well, we'll see how much interested they are after we've <laughs> finished talking about it. So it's a full week of tournaments this week. Uh, we go around to the Australasian Tour with the TPS Sydney. The PGA Tour has its first, its second, I'm sorry, designated event at Riviera. DP World Tour is in Thailand. Asian Tour is in Qatar. And the Ladies European Tour is in Saudi Arabia for a big week there where a few big name players from the LPGA Tour have made the trip across. But what better place than to start than at home with the TPS Sydney, which is at Bonnie Doon this week. Uh, it's been at Bonnie Doon every year since it started up, but another one where they're playing for a bit more money this year, $250,000, hosted by Braith and Nasta. Uh, and Bonnie Doon, a great tournament venue since it's redesigned by what was then Ogilvy, Clayton, Cocking and Mead. Shortish by tournament standard venues, but interesting. And it's another wet week in Sydney, which it was last year when Jared Felton beat Brendan Jones in a hash together playoff when the Sunday had to be abandoned due to heavy rain. Uh, but an interesting golf course, a strategic golf course, place where there'd be less than driver off a lot of tees. Different winds can make it play very differently. Some drivable par fours where I poorly caddied down a pike <laughs> to hit it on the wrong fairway a couple of years back. Uh, but a very good golf course, a very interesting tournament. Logue, one that I know you've been out to a few times and a golf course you know very well as well. Indeed, yeah. I was just there scouting the course a couple of weeks ago, uh, caddying for the pennant team out there, and uh, it was much firmer than it had been last year. I think if you recall last year, with all of that wet we had, the cooch was really lush and spongy, uh, pretty mushy. Um, uh, but this year, the cooch and the fairways are a lot firmer. There's some good run out there. Um, but the greens were pretty soft a couple of weeks ago, but I think that's part of their prep for the tournament. They're just like looking after them and then they're going to start rolling and cutting them pretty pretty severely, I think, to try and get them hard and fast for the tournament. So it should be some good golf if, if the rain stays away. I think the first part of the week's going to be a bit wet, but it dries up and you'll get to see the ball on the ground, hopefully. Yeah, the Tuesday morning as we record this podcast, it's raining rather heavily, I can tell you, as I came from the airport. So it will be a little bit damper, but it does drain very well, particularly the, the back paddock there that's built on a lot of sand. So, Indeed. Uh, but a few players to look out for out there this week. Elvis Smiley tops the list. Elvis has been playing some magnificent golf, particularly in the last rounds of tournaments lately, going very low. And his caddy slash one of our regular riders, Mike Clayton, messaged me this morning saying it's about time Elvis finished one off. So in Clayton's own way, I think that's encouragement. Yeah, I think so too. Um, they're actually they're a pretty good team. I think. Uh, I think Elvis probably listens to Clates, which is uh, which is nice. He was there again, thereabouts at Vic Open again last week. What I really like about Elvis, he's really aggressive all the time. He's always got his foot to the floor. Now it's going to mm. cost him. It's already cost him a couple of times, potentially. But it's going to probably a bit like Phil Mickelson win him a lot more than it loses him over the course of his career. I think we're watching the development of him, particularly with Clates on the bag and these tournaments at home. The development of players is going to be very very successful internationally in the longer. Term. Yeah, it just swings the golf club beautifully. Love the golf, golf swing. Clates is, an, is a nice bloke, but he doesn't throw out compliments lightly. 
and he said to me more than once about it. Obviously, he said it publicly more than once about it. Obviously, he is a guy that hits it out the middle of the club face all the time. And that's not true of all golf professionals, and Elvis has really got that talent. Absolutely. 100%. And another one to, to watch there from the men's side, it is, of course, TPS events where men and women compete against each other from different tees, uh, would be David Michaluzzi, who's having an absolute bumper summer. Was right there in the Australian Open for a little while, won the WA PGA at Kalgoorlie, again last week played well at the Vic Open. He just playing really good golf. It's been saddled with me in the tips for the last couple of weeks, which probably hasn't helped him, but you're right. The difference between David Mukaluzzi of a couple of years ago, who had that ability to go low, had a bit of a slump for a while there, David, but he's back now shooting those low scores, but when he's not shooting low scores, he's playing good, consistent golf, and that's why he's contending at tournaments. The the 78s are no longer, they're 73. So the 64s really stand up. He's another one, incredibly aggressive player, fantastic to watch. I like that high fade he hits yeah. as well, like he gets the ball to drop from the sky very well. And good I think personality. Go good kid. Well. Good to watch. A bit of fun to watch yeah. him. He's got a bit of personality. So, And it's nice to see these tournaments on TV, so we get that. Absolutely. The third and fourth rounds on Fox Sports and KO, and great to watch and go, great to go out to a TPS event. Oh, very relaxed atmosphere for tournament golf. And this TPS Sydney uh, does it very well. Braith and Astor is a very uh, engaged host, brings along his old rugby league mates to play the Pro-Am and everything like that, but also gets people out there watching, and it is a fantastic event. Last year's winner, Jared Felton's another one to watch there, just a pure ball striker, Jared, and plays that golf course well. You can probably strike Matt Griffin off from contending because I'm playing the Pro-Am with him on Wednesday, <laughs> and he'll walk away a shattered man. Nobody can unsee that. <laughs> no, but Matt, Matt probably is worth a look this week. Good he, player. Another good player, mm. like strategic golf, when his brain's required to be switched on, that's when it's Matt Griffin week. Bonnie uh, June's good length for him to it, be. Perfect, exactly. yeah. He's not as short as you'd think just because of his stature. He actually gets it out there a fair <laughs> I, way. I, I, he's, he's I wasn't making a, any aspersions long, about his stature. <laughs> I sat next to him on a plane, and I think he felt more sorry for me. Just for, It's more about carry, isn't it, in the modern day, Jimmy? The absolutely. really long hit is they carry the ball a long way. And mm. Guys like Matt can get it out there with a bit of run, but it's the guys who can carry trouble. Like they, Elvis is one of those. Hits it high in the air, and it stays in the air for a long time yeah, that, before that, it comes down. That's definitely... You, if you're building an ideal professional golfer, you want a high, towering oh. ball flight because the, the spin has come off the ball with driver so much that it's not affected when it goes up into the stratosphere. Uh, amongst the others, to worth have a look at, Jordan Zunick is playing some okay golf, but Jordan was a member at Bonnie Doon for a long time. Plays really well. A couple of years ago, was right in the mix there. From the women's side, it, which... We've had a few women winning these TPS events. Uh, Mina Yoon won at Rosebud and Sarah Jane Smith at uh, the, uh, the Murray River event at Cobram Baruga. Sarah Jane's in the field again, mm-hmm. playing good golf. Grace Kim put together a good last round at the Vic Open, and Grace is just a outstanding yeah, I mean, talent. She's going to be very well known in the not too She's not yet, but she's going to be very well known in the not too Just getting ready to head over to the LPJ Tour for her first season over there. Uh, so she'd be definitely one to watch. Grew up in Sydney, would have played there a fair bit. Kelsey Bennett, another one who missed out at Ladies European Tour Q School at the end of last year, came home, got a WPJ Tour card and has gone out there and hit the ground running. Uh, Cassie Porter, who uh, G.I. Shin, who won the Vic Open last week, talked about how impressed she was with Cassie. Cassie's been a pro now for about 18 months and come a long way Good in my sure watching. Has. She's yep. she's becoming a really, really tidy professional who does all those little things well. And then uh, American Emma Talley, who mm-hmm. we still quite An haven't worked out why out she's here. here. Yeah. Yeah. But Get she's out there this here. week and Just ask getting her. I will, I will, I'll be out there tomorrow, so I'll track her down and ask yeah. her why intriguing. she's here. It is an intriguing, intriguing. addition to the field I mean, that we've seen the America. last few weeks, isn't it? Yeah. It's good there's, to see. There's nothing on the old PGA still, tour, you, but She's the only one I can think of who's got on a plane and come all the way over here. Getting some tournament Australia. Good to see. I'll, I'll report or? back next yeah. week as to why she's here. Yeah, okay, good. But you. before we move off to the next event, we need some tips from everyone. So let's start with you, Logue. Who do you like at TPS Sydney? I like Grace Kim at TPS Sydney. Sydney's her home turf, and uh, she would have played a lot of golf at uh, Bonnie Doon. And uh, I think it's Grace's turn to uh, win one of these TPS things. She's been threatening superb result last week in the uh, Vic Open. Uh, so I think she's uh, she's yeah, my pick. It'd be just the right result at just the right time in her career too, wouldn't it? If she was to it get up be. this week, just before heading Makes to America sense. for the old PGA, it would be a really nice way to sort of go off. I don't mind that tip at all. And for yourself, Rod? Jake McLeod. Um, consistent. 
top 10 the last two events. He shot one of the better back nines to finish in the top 10 in difficult conditions at the Vic Open. Another guy who's been knocking on the door has to win something at some point soon. No reason why he can't do it this week. Very so, tidy play. Very, Jake, tidy. As well. very another, professional, professional. Yeah, and uh, another really solid ball striker. Yep, Hits agreed. the ball nice and straight. He's a, a good pick around there, and he's played well there before and very close with Braith and Astor, so... Uh, for me, I'll be going with Elvis Smiley. I think finally he will break the shackles of Clayton on the bag that's <laughs> holding him back from a win. But yeah, his his run's been fantastic uh, to start the year. S- tied second at Rosebud, tied six last week. He goes low, but he thinks about golf courses as well. Good ball flight for around Bonnie Doon and a golf course that Clayton says the caddy will know exceptionally well. Uh, you make a case for all three of those, and I think what's interesting about that, you could make a case for another 10 players, and that's what's exciting about both this format and Australian golf at the moment. It's actually really interesting to watch. It's been fabulous to have golf on the TV mm-hmm. on Saturday and Sunday afternoon for the last three or four weeks. I mean, it's been a long time since we could just sit down on a Sunday, turn on the golf, and annoy your other half by watching it all afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. And to have a regular cast of characters. Exactly. That that's exactly. And they exactly. start to become that's household right. names for this generation of exactly. golfers that We'll remember Michaluzzi, how, Smiley, t- how McLeod, golf on TV used to be in Australia at this fabulous. period of time. Yeah, it's, it's, great. it's good to see. Webex players series. Yeah, which deserves a lot of praise, Very which much. we do give it a lot, but it deserves it. The other one for me as well is Elvis is my tip, but I'm going to have a little each way sort of deal with Suo, who was- Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't I, know. Yeah, I'm not sure this was this is, Was that in the book? Yeah. I, uh, I believe I'm the host, so <laughs> I can do what I want. But okay. Suo oh. was tied since last week and- Looks like she's been really putting in some hard work, and and I think she'll play well. And another great player in the field really? to have another LPJ Tour player that is, is yeah. fantastic. Great timing for the WPJ Tour of Australasia down here at the moment. Ten years ago, amateur women's golf was her, Lydia Ko, and Minji Lee, and yep. you couldn't split the three of them. Yep. Minji and Lydia have gone on with it. Sue hasn't lost that talent; she just hasn't got quite got there yet. Yep. And you'd have to think that at some point it's going to happen. I, all, I, all three as amateurs as well were world top 20 well, players absolutely. as Lydia, it was. Yeah, Lydia yeah. Co. won on the LPGA at the age of, what, 15? Yep. Yeah. yeah, Extraordinary um, stuff. Yeah. Next, uh, we are going to move along to the PGA Tour and a designated event. And who better than Adrian Logue, who designates himself to take on these <laughs> elevated events. What would you say? I don't get out of bed for anything less. Yeah, for anything less than a designated <laughs> event. I'm on the same schedule as a Rory or somebody like that. You know, I just, uh, so the Genesis Invitational this week is a designated event, the second one in a row after Phoenix. Uh, I like to think of it as the LA Open still. That's uh, that's how I refer to it. I think you could – if you, it would be acceptable to say Riv as well. I'm going to Riv this year. Everybody knows what you're talking about. I'm a Nissan Open guy. Oh, sorry. Okay. Oh. <laughs> sorry. You're going to play the Nissan this yeah. year, right? Eh? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I do. I do like a, an old sponsor name. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's right. The yeah. old Mobile Classic. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. All right, so I, I object to this in a number of different ways. Genesis Invitational. I mean, no one's going. To, I'm going to the Genesis Invitational this year. Anyway, is it really an Invitational, Jimmy? It is. Yes. What makes it invitational? Because I've looked through the uh, one or two players list. get invited. Who would be there? <laughs> I've, I've looked through the entire list of the field, and I couldn't see any who were an invitation. There was a couple of sponsors exemptions, but as far as I know, that happens every week on the PGA Tour, and the rest of them were like the normal exemption. Isn't it just categories. a fancy name for a limited field event. I invitational think words are important, Rod. Yeah, and, no, they are. I'm uh, just saying it's what it is. I think it's invitational is being missed. Yeah, Arnold Palmer's the same. Right I think there. Jack's tournament is the same, is it not? Yeah, they are. They they. I don't see anybody posting their invitation <laughs> <laughs> to got my the Genesis. Genesis Invitational three months in advance because you know why? Because no invitations get sent. Exactly out. right. It is Good not point, an invitation. Well made. Anyway, it's played at Riviera Country Club in Pacific Palisades, uh, which is it's exactly a, what we wanted. For <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's perfect. <laughs> it's just designed by George Thomas. Uh, George Thomas, who did a lot of work in that area, uh, uh, Bel Air and um, LACC he had a bit to do with, and I think he had a bit to do with um, Pine Valley as well, uh, and. It's Kaikuyu Fairways, Kaikuyu Rough, Bent and Power Greens, Eucalyptus, and Warm Climate. Basically, they're playing a Sydney golf course. <laughs> North Shore Sydney, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Sydney North Shore. Yeah. I, I remember yeah, writing previews of this event, and it's always eucalyptus trees and all that sort of stuff. Well, Australians you, play well there, very too. Very much. And when you turn on the TV, you really could be forgiven for thinking that it was being played on the North Shore of Sydney. The yeah. look is exactly what we have here on the North Shore of Sydney. It's Except right. it's a world-class golf Apart course. Apart from the fact that it's a world-class <laughs> golf course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> it really shows what Sydney Parkland golf courses should aspire to be. Yeah. What they um, be. Yeah, that's right. And I think uh, if you know, Sydney was to look to be taken seriously on the world stage, you could, look wor- you could do worse than try and emulate what they've got at Riviera. Uh, some of the – it's a, it's a as we alluded to, it's a – 
storied major venue, Hal Sutton beat Jack Nicholas there in 83. It's one of my earliest golf memories, seeing Hal Sutton uh, win that event. Steve Elkington, one of the Australian victories there in 95. Uh, Robert Allenby and Adam Scott have both won there. Adam Scott's had a couple of victories there. One of them one official. One was unofficial. Un- unofficial. Yeah, I remember that rain delay. beat Chambly in that six-man playoff too. Did Randall Chambly was one of the players really? in that six-man yeah. playoff at Riviera. Yeah. He was a killer in playoffs, wasn't he, Allenby? Well, that three would he hit that particular week to that hole. To the 18. He was pelting with rain. Yeah. Yeah. It was normally a driver and maybe a five on. He hit a three with there to about six feet in the driving rain. It was just, I think the rest of the players at that point went, eh, just give him the trophy. <laughs> too good. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure, I'm almost 100% certain Chambly was one of the six people in the playoff. I think that 18th is one of the great finishing holes in golf. I great enjoyed amp- watching yeah. that amphitheatre. Yeah. It is a really good amphitheatre for golf. Some of the other notable holes, the first hole is the one with the ridiculously narrow <laughs> runway of a fairway. <laughs> yes. uh, but it's also the easiest par five on tour. Yep. Um, a tee shot that you're 400 feet above the fairway. That's right. There's elevated tee shot off the first and the rest of the course is sort of down. Mm, on, sort of a valley. Down in a valley, yeah. yeah. Uh, the sixth is the famous par three with a bunker in the middle of the green, uh, which is a lot of lot of fun. I don't know why we don't do that in more holes around the world. Because every time someone does, you go, oh, you can put the ring six. The river you can putt around it, Rod. Yeah, There's I know. But Norman's so that you can putt couple, around it. But Norman's done it at a couple of courses, and we rag on him for it. He's probably done it wrong. Yeah, that's true. Good point, well done. Um, <laughs> the tenth. Uh, the tenth is the famous risk reward par four, um, which is a good hole. No, I mean, you know, it's it maybe a little bit severe around the green yeah, these days. It's a bit severe. It's, it's always no in- one really goes for it, and but a hard, almost one of the hardest wedge shots in the world. That that if you lay it up off that tee, uh, indeed, yep. Yeah. Uh, and a hole that I don't think gets the credit it deserves is the fifteenth, which is a really quality. Like long dog leg right par four. I say long these days. It's a drive and a short iron, or maybe even a drive and a it's wedge. Pretty long, but in <laughs> that makes it that makes it reasonably long. Uh, but in 1982, there's a fantastic um, uh, YouTube video of this. But the LA Open in 1982 featured a battle between Johnny Miller, Tom Weiskopf, and Tom Watson. Oh, stop it! Uh, all up. playing in the final group together. Yeah. Johnny Miller hit one of the greatest approach shots you'll ever see to the 15th green in the final round there. From outside the dog leg, he's just absolutely wailed on a five iron or something like that and got it pretty close and birdied, went on to lose the tournament. But, uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Hit, not a <laughs> it was an amazing thing. Send me the link to that. We'll put it in the show notes. Oh, indeed I will. Uh, the field this year um, has pretty much, ever, being a designated event, it's got pretty much every eligible player from the official World Golf Rankings top 100, everybody that we care about, at least. I think Aaron Wise isn't, isn't coming. Players. <laughs> Mav McNeely's not coming for some reason. Um, but, yeah, pretty, other than that, and the live players, there's every uh, significant player from the world top 100. And there is also the world 1,283rd best player this week, Tiger Woods, is playing. The return of competitive golf for Tiger Woods. What do we think about that? The most muted Tiger returns to golf experience I can remember. This Indeed. Week, I think. Yeah, a lot yeah. of expectations, isn't there? Yeah. At the event he played, the first ever PJ Tour event he played as a teenager, and he's never won. Hopeless at the course. Hopeless And he's actually, Riviera. he's the Hopeless. quasi-host of the Genesis yeah, yeah. Invitational right. as well, Indeed. but Indeed. he doesn't seem to play it well at all, but wants to win it, obviously. He did skip it for a little while at one stage before he became the host, but made his announcement on Twitter on Greg Norman's birthday. Do you think that was intentional? <laughs> I doubt it, but it was, would have been a delicious little side dish to go. With the, uh, <laughs> It'd be the, interesting to watch him, though, come back and see where he's at and he see the state of his game and tough tough walking golf oh, course to make so. your return Which when you don't you walk wonder, so well. well that's the, it's the course much, where... Um, uh, sorry, go wrong. How much, how ready might he be? You can't see Tiger signing up just because he's a tournament host to play there if he doesn't think he's ready. Hmm. This is the thing about Woods. It doesn't matter how unlikely it is. You cannot ever say that I'll bet against him. It's madness. But you, if he's playing, it means that he thinks he can. Yeah. It means he's better than what we saw last year when he really struggled. Even at St. Andrews, which is flat, lots of uneven surfaces, obviously. But there he really struggled. We saw him limping and struggling with the leg. I'm guessing that he's way past that if he's agreed, if he's signed up to play this week. You, you, his chances of playing well are just determined. You look at him before he gets to the first tee, how he's moving that yeah. day because – you know, he's, he's, some days he struggles, some days he doesn't. It's a Sorry, real lottery. You know. Well, in a mirror of history, this is where Ben Hogan made his tournament mm. return after his car accident and uh, went all the way to a 18-hole playoff, I think, on a fifth day and eventually just couldn't, just ran out of puff. But I think the quote from, it might have been Herbert Warren Wind, was his legs weren't strong enough to carry around his heart. Yeah. Although well, <laughs> <laughs> Hogan, of course, had a lot more success here than Tigers had this 
this is one of Hogan's alleys, is it not, Riviera? Yeah. Yes, Multiple it is. Multiple wins yeah. there. Yeah. Yes, it is. Sort of stuff, so. uh, defending, speaking of winners, defending champ is Joachim Neiman, who won't be there. So uh, not defending champ. As a, as a live, uh, or, yeah, last year's winner. Uh, live player, won't be turning up. Um, Australians in the field are Cam Davis, Jason Day, Lucas Herbert, Adam Scott, and uh, Danny Lee will bestow Danny Lee. A, we'll, we'll, we'll take Danny Lee. Yeah, yep. yeah. Uh, Adam Badley is ninth alternate, so cross your fingers for that. <laughs> I, um, think blokes are have to get I, I think that may be a stretch for Aaron, <laughs> I think but so that's, too. We, we, we're on your team, Aaron. I wonder if he's even in California. Uh, Rory is playing this week uh, since it's a designated event. Well, he has to, doesn't he? You're only allowed to miss one, and the tournament of champs at the start one. of the year was one, even That's though it's right. not a full field event. So these first, these are the first two full That's field right. events last week and this week. And he, he missed played the, last week. Missed Hawaii, so that's it. Yep. He's playing all of the designated events from here to the end. That's right. He wanted this. That's exactly This right. is the schedule he wanted. So it he might be fair been. to say that he's being hoisted on his own petard. <laughs> I've been waiting to say. <laughs> Ever it since might be we've fair. started I don't podcasting. know if it's worth saying, but it might be fair. But Rory's gone from being able to, like, pick his own events and be very selective about his schedule. You might even say he's been a bit of a rankings manipulator with the events he's picked. Um, <laughs> wow. Now, I think this year will be very telling for Roy to see whether he can manage his energy levels through all of these events and what his results will be like when he's not being so super selective about what events he's coming to. And he brought this upon himself. This is what he wanted. You know, he's got it. Um, Ram as well, I think, is very uh, interesting to watch. He... Unlike Rory, Ram plays good everywhere. Yep. Is, is there any style of course that doesn't suit Ram? No. If it doesn't, right, he right seems now to, at least in his seems career, to they, just manage. Yeah, um, yeah. He's not been playing his best golf, and he's not been out of the top five <laughs> for no week months. So, um, so we'll get to picks. Uh, my pick. I'll go first. You, is that right? Go is that for fair? your life. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm picking Matt Fitzpatrick. Oh, okay. Any reason, or just I don't have to explain myself. <laughs> <laughs> did you do that because I told you I'd picked him and you wanted to get in first? Oh, no, I didn't ball? know you picked him. I did pick him. Oh, I had sorry. reasons, but sorry, it doesn't really matter. No, that's okay. I've got to back up anyway. Okay. So Adam, it's, it's Adam Scott yeah. plays well here. Statistically, he's one of the best. He'll have no expectations and no pressure on him. Could do nothing this week, but could just bob up. When when Scott wins, he often just bobs up. It's almost out of nowhere. He's just had a win. So does like the place. And, yeah, I don't uh, I don't think there's, uh, don't think there's any doubt he can get it done. Like Rory, Adam will be playing all the designated events from here because he missed last week at the Phoenix he Open because he didn't realise it was a designated event. At when what initially point did they said, just give up, though, and they go, oh, we'll just miss out on the pit money? Yeah. What happens if you don't play one? You we'll find out. We'll find you out. You just miss out on yeah. the pit. But I think you don't but get then your player. The commissioner still has program. discretion to actually award them pit money. I mean, you've got to allow for injury and those sorts of things. Yeah. yeah. To and golfers pulling out with injuries that aren't necessarily yeah, injuries is a long, that's, long history. My wrist is hurting right now if it needs to. Well, that's going to make a mockery of the whole thing. Yeah, that's right. No, Adam's that's a bit – remember the time he missed a tea time because the tournament gift was an iPhone and he set the alarm wrong? No, I don't. You remember that was a few years ago? <laughs> missed his pro-am tea time, and I think, and got disqualified or because the tournament gift was a new iPhone – and his, his reason was, oh, I set the alarm, but I must have set it on the wrong time zone or something. It's quite bizarre. Anyway. Uh, Adam was probably going to be one of my your choices. Clean but, up your admin, Adam. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go for a different Australian this week. I'm going to go for the resurgent Jason Day. Yeah. Ooh, not a bad He's pick. playing yeah, some really, really, really good golf. Yeah, he gets a resurgent tag. Yeah, he was good in Phoenix last week. Mm-hmm. He's working insanely hard on his golf swing with Chris Como, former coach to Tiger Woods. He likes this sort of golf course too. Jason hits the ball sky high. He can, you know, it's a bit land and splat sort of a golf course, which will suit him. Um, so, yeah, Jason gets my vote. But had the, had the taste of being in contention last week, and that might be the most important piece of the puzzle. Yes, absolutely. I think so. And he seems to really want it, which yeah, is, agreed. I think, probably missed a little while early, a couple of years back. He's, he really wants to get back Hard to, to be that. driven level. when, A, you've been there, and B, you're hurting. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, and he was hurting with his back for a long time, really hurting for yeah, a long time. Absolutely. So. so I think Jason is a big chance. And my other tip is that the words Baranka <laughs> and <laughs> references to Humphrey Bogart's tree will become nauseating by day two of the coverage. Mm. So oh, I'll be very intrigued to see as well whether they've burnt off the rough, which they've done in past years have, at Riviera. Yeah where the Kaikuyu has been browned off. I don't know what they do, like a light dusting of Roundup or something like that, but it looks great. Yeah. Like it creates a transition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a good contrast. And it's something, if anybody listening who looks at Sydney golf courses with Kaikuyu all over the place, and it's a lush Kaikuyu everywhere, 
burn some of that stuff off. Get the roundup out there. It looks good. If it's good enough for Riviera, it must Mission be good enough for a Sydney Yeah, to that's you right. By Adrian Loeb. I'm guessing you have a personal sponsorship <laughs> arrangement with Roundup as well. <laughs> Moving on from the PJ Tour, we're going to head to what was once called the European Tour and is now anything but also in name, the DP World Tour. And Rod, you are going to take us through the Thailand Classic. Oh, well, we'll go through this one pretty quickly, but just on the DP World Tour. Last week, the European Tour played in Singapore, and the Asian tour played in Oman. Yep. <laughs> so if you don't think the golf world's been flipped around, just have a look at those two and see how it's worked. Uh, the Thailand Classic, this is back after a five or six-year hiatus. It was played for two years back in 2015-16, both won by Australians, so that might give us a clue for this week's, at the Amata Springs Country Club, which I'm going to let you fill us in on a bit, Jimmy, because you were there for, was it the Women's or the Men's Asia Pacific Amateur? This past year. Fantastic question. It was the men's the Asia Pacific, Pacific Amateur last year, won by Aussie Harrison Crow. There you go. So great Australian form at this course. For those who might be thinking, I think I've heard of it, this is the one that's got the boat that goes out to the 78th green, the path three, which is literally on the titular island, spring. The green on the titular spring. Mm, yes. Exactly. It, it's a very good golf course for tournament golf. Um, big, big property undulation that wasn't there because it was a, a swamp that's sort of been dredged to they make They split it. two huge lakes, which had a barrier between them. Correct. Rebuilt the barrier, and then that barrier that they rebuilt is now the 18th hole. Yes, which is all watered down the left-hand side, green tucked around a corner, nerves in trying to hit the fairway, first of all. There's yeah. actually out of bounds right Yeah, uh, is tough enough. Then a, a shot in there with your second that can be quite intimidating, Harrison believe me, was very intimidated <laughs> when he was hitting his second shot in there and he thought it went in. Uh, but really good golf course for tournament golf. There's some good scoring opportunities early, but then a tough little run. Uh, but yeah, very good golf course. Just near Chonburi for anyone who's a big fan of Thailand, which is about an hour away from Bangkok. Fantastic stuff. So Andrew Dote, Scott Hender, the two Australians who won there in 2015 and 2016, was formerly co-sanctioned with the Asian Tour. That no longer the case, obviously, with the live connections between the Asian Tour. Uh, Australians in the field. Now, here's something interesting. We like a little nugget. Category 8A in the exemption list for this week's tour, GP World Tour event is professionals as determined by the PGA Tour of Australasia. I'm going to suggest to you that Category 8A was invented sometime in the last few months. <laughs> and I don't know why, but I couldn't find any reference to it anywhere previously. So in that category, we've got Blake Windred, Aaron Pike, Louis Dobler, Dimi Papadados, Anthony Quayle, and one other Australian in the field, Jason Scrivener, who is a DP World Tour regular. But yeah, I reckon they've made that category up. At least they're not just calling uh, it an invitational. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, I mean- As there's... determined by the PGA Tour of Australasia. So it's just- some handpicking so, so of players. The PGA Tour of Australasia said, "You've got oh, this many got, slots. You've you got can five hand- slots. I, I, Here's five players." What I'm going to suggest to you is that the DP World Tour cards offered through our Order of Merit here at the PGA Tour of Australasia uh, is three cards. Mm-hmm. Those five gentlemen, five in that five. category, One, two, three, four, five. Uh, I think were the top five on the Order of Merit oh, last okay. year. So they might be getting some extra starts based off, off these smaller events oh, that don't go. have the bigger fields against designated events. So Nothing to do with good. swing planes and putting strokes, but tick to the PGA Tour of Australasia as well. These pathways that these players are getting access to that they're organising, full marks to them for what they're doing in that space as well. It's not easy, uh, but this for, for players like, Blake Winter, well, you know Aaron Pike well. Yes. It's a huge opportunity for him. Massive. Yeah, I mean, I mean, every one of those Aussies in that category, Blake Windred's a young guy yep. making starts. He's had some status on the Challenge Tour mm-hmm. and in Europe. Um, Louis Dobler, the same, who, again, I know very well, a young guy coming up who needs to play outside of Australia. I'm sure he'd love to play the Australasian Tour and not have to leave, but the money there isn't enough to, to no. do that. He wants to go overseas and play, so he gets a great start. And, and as you say, Aaron Pike, who... An older guy who's still looking to crack through. Dimi Papadatis is another great example. You know, Dimi Papadatis, the way you see him walk and play golf, you go, he looks like a serious European player. tour yeah, player. Yeah, very much Serious so. player. And he's just, again, one on the challenge tour. Mm-hmm. He's right there. He skipped defending the Vic Open last week to play the Singapore event on the DP World Tour. Played really well early, too. Huge opportunity. And Anthony Quayle, another one. Real Second player. best moustache in Australian golf <laughs> behind myself, of course. But Japanese to a regular who's yep. determined to get to America and has had some close calls, and this could be a good way for him to do so. We'll get there, too. He's got all the weapons, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. He does. He's a, a, yeah. We, I wouldn't say any of them are any golfers a bad person because I deal with them all the time, but that is a capsule of really great guys that you really hope for success for, too. Just a... Just a 
a scoop of confidence for Dimmy would go a really long way, I feel like. He's just a little too hard on himself. He oh, yeah. doesn't give himself the credit he deserves for the game that he's got. And I sometimes feel like when he gets to the pointy end, if there's some others who are better known around, he just doesn't back himself quite enough. Hmm, nice bit of armchair psychiatry there. I like mm. that. Good. Lovely bloke. You won't meet a nicer bloke than him. No. Data, so. might, might be able to indulge his passion for fishing in Thailand while he's there. Maybe you can go out at, in Amata Spring and, in the, in spring. the spring and, yeah. and drop a line because there is there – is, uh, Off the boat while you're on your way out. On the, the boat, when you go out to the, the, the 17th green, there's a little bit of – there's food to feed the fish as you go out there. The guy okay. who drives it will tell you to throw some food out Are for them. Are they koi or something though yeah, or something like that? Horrendous. Not something you're going to eat. Yeah. You don't get this on the other golf podcasts. Uh, Jason Scrivener, his own exemption category said, time for tips. I'm going with Adrian Otteigi. Final round 66 last week in Singapore on a golf course that, let's be honest, didn't really lend itself to that sort of scoring, nor did it lend itself much to spectating. What an awful example of golf that Laguna National Golf Course was. Yeah, it's it, it was built to be brutal. I had some friends who were in Singapore for a long time, and it doesn't get much playing traffic because it is hard. It is not easy to get around. A very interesting choice, but I'd suggest maybe some of the more regular uh, tournament venues in Singapore might be played on some other tours. So that's probably the issue. 66 there. around there is a good harbinger of perhaps things to come this week. Absolutely. For you, Loke, who do you like this week? Well, I feel like there should be a rule that I get first dibs on all the Adrians, but since Rod has obviously just gone and claimed that. Because I got up early and did my tips and you wandered in here <laughs> 10 minutes before we started recording. <laughs> oh, excuse me, sir. Uh, I'm going with Torbjorn Ollison because uh, I think he's uh, – well, I mean, he's already had a win since he's coming back from a uh, disgraceful exit from the game for a period of time. Real name, uh, Daniel. But I think he's uh, – yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, his, real name, his actual name's Daniel. Yeah. Torbjorn really? Thunder, is it not? Uh, Thunder, Bear. Thunder, Bear. Thunder Bear. Thunder Bear, yeah. yeah. Just one of those useless nuggets I carry around in my brain every day about golf. Okay, I'm still processing Process that. that. That's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Is he going to lose your, your endorsement? <laughs> I'm reeling. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I think he's uh, feeling like he belongs again on tour. Um, the one one win certainly helps that along the way, but now he's just he's used to contending again. It must feel like he's back in the rhythm of play, and he's just too good to not be a regular contender on tour and win again. So Absolute flush of that. Yeah. Yep. Just hits the ball so well. Uh, for me, I've had a little bit of... Uh, Anks trying to pick out who I'm going to tip here this week uh, because I'd love for an Australian to get up. And I think Dimi Papadatis has a genuine chance this week. But I'm going to throw a little bit wider and go with Takumi Kanaya, who won on the Asian Tour last week and is back now playing on the DP European World, World Tour. Mm -hmm. okay. um, I'm, I haven't quite done my research enough to know that he played potentially the Asia Pacific when it was played there prior to last year. Okay. You have to think, was it 2017 they played I there? Think I think it was. he would have been in there. And I think he would have. And it's a golf course that if you know it, you play well there. Mm -hmm. um, he's just, he's a really, really good player, Takumi. Um, and struggled a little bit uh, when trying to leave Japan for the first time. It was during COVID. Didn't really find his best stuff, but was really impressive last week in Oman, winning an international series event. Um and I think he can he can keep it going in Europe, which is where he wants to play uh, at the moment and work his way towards America. Also worth keeping an eye on this week is TK Chantananwat, who is still, I think, 15 years of age. He's been 15 for about three years. He's one of the, surely yeah, I, he's got to be older than 15 <laughs> now. Who is an amateur oh, only no, by no, word. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he was right in that Asia-Pacific am for a Couple of days, uh, very impressive. He's a local tie. He's gonna he's gonna be right amongst it. I'd suggest, um, and seriously impressive. Like he is he is going to be something special. Still wants to play college golf. Last I spoke to him, which I would have thought he'll be passing up a lot of money to do that. So worth keeping an eye on there. From Thailand, we're going to go to Saudi Arabia, and Rod, you're going to take us through the. Ladies Saudi International a couple of weeks after we had the men's version. Which I think is probably the most interesting golf tournament, not so much in the golf aspects that's on the calendar this week. So fourth year of the tournament, it's been a $1 million purse uh, for the first three outings. $5 million purse this week behind only the five women's majors. There is no other purse that comes close to it <laughs> after that. So that puts it into some pretty rarefied area and you can imagine why. But here's what's the most interesting. The Aramco Saudi Ladies International 
presented by the Public Investment Fund. For those who haven't been following, quiet bit out loud. For those who haven't been following closely, the Public Investment Fund is, of course, the source of the money for the Live Tour. So the question becomes: Is this the beginning of the Live uh, equivalent in women's golf? So. Hard to say, not sure, but it's an incredible investment in the game. It's the same purse as the men's tournament that was played there a couple of weeks ago at the uh, Royal Greens Golf and Country Club King Abdullah Economic City. It's part of the Aramco Team Series. They've been doing this for a couple of years, which hasn't really gotten the traction that it might have. I think that's partly because of the Saudi Arabian connection as well. They play on five different five different countries on three different continents, I think. They play New York, London, Hong Kong, maybe Singapore, and, of course, in Saudi Arabia itself, you have team captains and – anyway, uh, some really interesting stuff. 120 people in the field, Georgia Hall defending. Five, uh, 11 under was the winning score last year. 2021, Co won it at 23 under. And in 2020, Emily, Emily Pedersen beat Georgia Hall at 10 under. So hard to say what the scoring might do. That's a pretty big uh, pretty big swing between them. As in a – well, as an example of this, okay, so Aditi Ashok won the first event of the Ladies European Tour two weeks ago in Kenya, 45,000 euros. Marja Stark won last week in in Mallorca, sixty seven thousand five hundred euros, or maybe US dollars. Not sure. This week's winner seven hundred and fifty thousand US dollars. Mm. It's a handy chunk of change. It's not only is it handy, but the the disparity between this event and the rest of the LET schedule tells you there's something unusual going on here. I would suggest uh, the field this week maybe suggests there's something a little bit unusual. Yeah, there's some interesting players missing as well. Lydia Ko will be here, but she's played here every year. Tired Titty Cool. There's a bunch of other top 10 in the world players as well. Under a really unusual category, um, they've listed them. It's the really the categories. Into the categories. categories. Well, you? when you go looking for fields at tournaments, they're, they're listed under categories. And generally, the further you go down, the less likely players are to get a start or they're the you know they're not the high-profile players. Here, the very last category listed, non-member, top 300 in the Women's World Golf Rankings or the Rolex Rankings, and this is where you find the big stuff. Lydia Ko, Lexi Thompson, Inji Chun, Hyoju Kim, Nasa Hatoka, Danielle Kang, Hannah Green, Minji Lee, not there, interestingly, Yuka Sasso, Gabby Lopez, Jungun Lee Six. You can see the quality of players that are turning up, and with the size of the purse, that's not a surprise. But I think the politics around this tournament, apart from just the tournament itself, are also of significant interest. And is this the first play by public investment fund to begin a women's live, for want of a better term? Who knows? Possibly. Any word on the dress regulations, Rod, for this week? I didn't see any or didn't look like there have been issues about this in the Min past. Minji made Saudi quite a bit of news Min, there that's right. She had to wear saying, shorts, not skirts. Yeah. I think had to wear the, pants. Had to wear, had to wear pants. pants. Long sleeves and pants. And in, it's, it's a rather ridiculously hot, place. hot. But and you see, I saw some of the presentation. Photos. I'm sure Georgia Hall was not wearing long pants last year. So I'm not sure whether they relax those rules sometimes. It has been an issue in the past. And, of course, Saudi Arabia has issues about women's rights, which is what makes this controversial. One of the interesting aspects of this, of course, is – We've all been very vocal about live and the source of the money behind that. Where shorts are allowed. <laughs> Lots of people have pointed out, well, the hypocrisy, for want of a better term, of not giving as much coverage or as much criticism to the women when they play uh, under the sort of the Saudi Arabian banner, so to speak. And Aramco is a Saudi Arabian state-owned, Saudi Arabian state-owned oil company. I think that's partly due to the fact that women's golf just doesn't get the coverage. I think the criticism has been commensurate with the coverage they generally receive, which I think is out of whack. But I'd be interested in your thoughts on some of that, Jimmy. It's a, I've, I can't remember a time as turbulent in international golf as what we've got now. Absolutely not. And it's it's going to keep going and keep going. I mean, we've got court cases all over the place for DP World Tour, PGA Tour, and they'll be, they'll be rolling for a couple of years. And it would make sense if you know the, the public investment fund wants to keep expanding its golf offering that women's golf would be an, a target. Um, and that they'd spend some money on getting some of the best players to do so. And it's much more there for the taking as well, of course, because uh, the women are playing for a lot less money on the LPJ Tour than equivalent mm. on the PJ Tour. So They've got a number of women already amongst their team of ambassadors. Uh, Aramco ambassador. has definitely. Uh, yeah. Steph Aramco Kuriaku, and, and Golf Australian. Saudi, that's right. Um, Anna Nordquist. Yep. Uh, I think Emily Pedersen is one. Bronte Law perhaps is one. So they've got a number of those. Just quickly, I have to mention Meg McLaren, who's been – fairly public about her criticisms and, and discomfort with the, the Saudi series in the past. She released a statement on Twitter the other week. She's playing in this event, uh, and she released a statement to sort of explain that. I wonder, Logue, how other players feel about some of this stuff. What do you reckon? Well, I think 
the question should be asked, what's your reason for going? And Meg McLaren has answered that. Um, and for her be, career, essentially. Yeah. She's got to do what she's got to do for her career. And that's quite all right. Mm. Um, and if it, given that prize money that you just outlined, if any of the women said, oh, I'm going there because the money's really good, I'd you know, find that completely acceptable as a reason. Mm. But um, yeah, we don't accept that quite so easily from Dustin Johnson and Phil Mickelson, do we? I accept it from Dustin Johnson because it's so authentic the yeah. way he says it. But you know, <laughs> there's other there's other players who say it, and I don't find it very authentic. But if so, if a woman says it and it's authentic and it is actually like starting perhaps from a place of more credibility because they're not playing for much money week in, week out. Uh, so this really is a standout. It's event. always felt it's, more it's, understandable. Doesn't mean it's, um, it's right. It's, it's a more, more understandable. There's more credibility, yeah. I think, to them saying we're going there for the money because <laughs> it really is very hard to pass up that money. Uh, so, yeah, but the question should be asked and, and answered where possible. And, of course, all of that detracts from the actual golf over the four days. Correct. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting event, the timing and everything like that as well because – You've had a men's event on the exact same golf course. You get a chance to watch how differently it will be played, which is always interesting. Some good Aussies in there too. Gabby Ruffles has mm. snagged an invite, yep. and Gabby uh, has been playing some good golf of Needs late. tournament too. reps, doesn't she? After she forgot to file her entry for LPGA Tour School, she went over and got a card in Europe. So uh, Whitney Hillier is another one who's played all these team series events. So who do we think is going to walk away with the trophy? Rod, let's start with you so you can take Logue's pick again. <laughs> Actually, I actually think I'm taking yours this time. I'm going with Steph Giriaku. Finished tied sixth here last year. She's a big game player. Touch of the Brooks Kepkers in that the bigger the event, the more likely Steph Kiriakou is to turn up. That event she won at Bonville as an amateur. You can't imagine the pressure that's on. I know it's only you know, it's only the Bonville Ladies Classic, etc., etc., etc. But for a, a 19 year old girl from Sydney, still an amateur, thinking about a professional career, she didn't just win that; she blitzed that field, and that's something special. There's a lot of ways to win golf tournaments. That was pretty special, and I wouldn't be at all surprised to see her. It's a fair while ago now. She needs to. She's won two times since on no, the Ladies no, European no. Tour, and she now plays on the LPGA. She's making her way. She must be nearly 22 by now, Lowe. I'd like to see just some fast right or off. No. <laughs> no. I, I feel like, you know, see, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of much better – there's a lot of better credential players in this field. I Steph Kiriakou is one who doesn't care about that. If no. she went head-to-head -head with Lydia Cohen to play off, it wouldn't bother her one little bit. No, it, it, I think – I don't think Steph would mind me saying that she's going to be a player who's going to have bad weeks because sure. she's a real streaky sort of a ball striker. The Elvis Mickelson, yeah, is she when she's just, good. She's really good. And when, yeah, exactly right. When she shows up and has her best, it's really watch this sort of stuff. I mean, the first TPS Sydney uh, they played a couple of years back. She went out and had eight under the first day, and then had a thousand the next day and missed the cut. Like it was, it's that's the perfect encapsulation of what Steph can be. But that's generally, yeah, that's right. But she generally holds onto it for a week. So a good pick there. I'm going to personally go with Hannah Green, mm -hmm. another one who's missed her chance to defend her Vic Open title, a, to a trophy that meant a lot to her in 2022. She didn't play last week as she got ready to go over and play here and gets ready for the, for the LPGA season. I, I feel Hannah's got a really big year ahead of her. You know, she came home, played that Australian Open and was right in there and then didn't have a good last day where she could have really, you know, won a tournament she considers almost alongside the majors, as she told you, Rod, many years ago. Uh, she won her first event of the year last year, so I'm thinking she's going to make that a habit each year and she's just going to come out and peel off a, an event um, and, and has a game really suited to this golf course. Hannah hits it a long way now after the last yeah. couple of years of putting in work, has become a really efficient ball striker um, and, and thinks her way around the golf course as well. Um, yeah. So I think big chance here. And, you know, she seems to, to play well when there's – something big on the line, whether it be money or an important title or whatever, things just tick off with Hannah. So um, maybe a, a Hannah Green, Jared Felton double. Ooh, oh, I see that. where you're going. You've yeah. set that up and then you've the knocked it over. you yeah. has just – you've invented that, yeah. haven't you, just for that headline? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, I have. Yeah. 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 Nice. If I, you know, they're engaged to be married. If only they were already married, then it would make it Richard easier. Richard Green and Marianne Scarpnord were engaged, were they not, when they both won the respective Vic Opens? They were indeed. A couple of years ago. Mm. Indeed. So it wouldn't be the first, indeed. but it'd still be a great story. Yeah, Hannah, I agree. I thought Hannah was going to have a huge year last year, yeah. uh, and I expect exactly the same this year. There's an urgency about her, I think. Yeah. Logue, who do you like? Uh, I noticed Anne Van Dam's in the field, but uh, I think this course, a lot of trouble on the left, and I think the 
flaws in her swing will be showing up this oh. week where she just pulls it left all the time. She's always fighting that lip. Emails to a.logue no at golfaustralia.com.au. Yeah. <laughs> one, but, uh, one day with how you critique Anne Van Damme's swing, she's going to come to play an event in Australia and just button you. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. If there's she no trouble be, on the left, maybe she should be all right. Fight. Yeah. yeah. No, I've watched no her on doubt, the golf no doubt. She's incredibly fit. <laughs> I'd yeah. be very careful if I was you. Uh, then there's a player who has a genuinely good swing. Uh, is Lynn Grant. Uh, and she's in the field. She's gone off the boil a little bit, but I, I look out for her. But that's not my pick either. I th- I'm going to pick. Gonna, we're going to rip every player in the field. Go, we're just going to go. That's right. left. <laughs> um, I'm going with Leona Maguire, and there's every chance I'm going to keep picking Leona Maguire <laughs> every single week until she wins. Uh, I think she's fantastic, and uh, again, I, I don't see why this course shouldn't suit her more than any other course. Yeah. So Leona Maguire. It's my. Opinion. It's a pretty safe. But if you were, if you were just trying to make a year of money, prize money at just the end of the year, Leona pick Leona Maguire. Short be a pretty hit, safe. It's sort of hit one week. Yeah, exa- exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, she's going to win one week, and she's probably going to finish in the top twenty every other. So, yeah. not a bad choice for the final event that we're going to have a look at. We head for the Asian Tour, which has its second week of international series this time in Qatar. So, they head to Doha Golf Club. Uh, Doha Golf Club will be. A familiar venue for people who watch TV. It was once the host of the Qatar Masters, which was European tour, Asian tour at different times. Actually, the first grass golf course in uh, Qatar. Okay. 1990s, it was sort of done by Peter Harradine. Very typical desert golf. You know, sand along the sides, green sort of oasis type look. Uh, it's actually, the Qatar Masters was always a good tournament to watch. It's a, mm-hmm. it's a good golf course with some good the stuff you need for tournaments. Interestingly, this is a fact I've picked out just for you, Logue, Mm. that 65 cacti were imported from Arizona to add to the golf course. Okay. Looks like they imported the sand as well. It's got very white sand. I'd suggest that the sand is the one thing that wasn't imported when they were building that golf course. (laughs) It would seem seem counterproductive to go, we're in the desert here, let's get some better sand. 10,000 or something trees and shrubs planted around there, which makes it very much. I know this is a rabbit hole, but goodness me, that just does nothing for the image of golf outside the game when you hear that sort of thing. As golfers, we need to be pointing that and saying, hey, this is not the way to do the game, please. They're not introduced a yeah. species of cactus as well. This yeah, is, I, which, yeah it, I mean, if they have brought in sand, that's it. Just <laughs> No, they've definitely brought in sand. It's no, white, white as a pure you talking about the bunkers? Snow. Yeah, the bunkers. Oh, right, but the outside sand is different. I don't, like, they've got waste areas which are pure white. Okay. They're white waste areas. Right. Now that you've got that out of your system, <laughs> uh, it, it's after last week was uh, in the International Series, Amanda, there's quite a few live players who'd made their way there, Sergio Garcia, Brooks Kepka and the like. Uh, they've since departed. They're not going to play this week. Not quite the same field. Um, an- another golf course where Adam Scott has won, by the way, won in 2000. He had a place in Qatar for a while, didn't he? Did he buy a place in Qatar? Somewhere in the Middle East. I thought it was Qatar, but I might be wrong. Oh, my- Long time ago. It's a, it's a, it's a sort of... It's a, it's a tricky sort of golf course. You wouldn't expect the scoring to be too low. Qatar Masters also, although this isn't that event, had a wonderful trophy. Mm. Big uh, golden oyster shell with yeah. a pearl in the yeah. middle of it. Fantastic. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, but the players to watch, there is still a couple of the live guys around, notably Charles Schwartzel, uh, who's played, played the European Tour early in his career and is – this sort of event sort of seems like the kind of thing where Charles might get up. Everyone's favourite name in golf, Jazz Jane Watnanond, will be there. Jazz is a seriously good player as yeah. well, and and I expect him to start to be a bit more consistent with his with his contending going forward. Barry Henson, the American with another great name who plays in Asia, played well last week in Oman. He'd be one to watch there, uh, and I'm just going to call him Saddam. Saddam Kaur. Oh, no, I'm no, going to watch your young, so, kid, young yeah. Thai guy. Played really well last year. Last There's two year of them. Great. There's him and the other one is um, Kang, Kang Wat Mai. Pachara Kong Wat Mai. Kong Wat Mai, yeah. Yeah, that one Most I've got. But yeah. uh, he is a seriously, yeah, good. seriously Both good player. Um, so he's one to watch. There's quite a few Aussies there, again, as is going to happen more and more on the Asian tour. Sure. Uh, you've got Wade Ormsby, uh, Scott Hend, Travis Smythe, Zach Murray, 
Andrew Dote, Todd Sinnott, Kevin Yuan, Terry Pilkadaris, Marcus Fraser, Jack Thompson, and John Lyris. Well, Good on you, Terry man. Pilkadaris. Yeah, Pilkadaris. Yeah, yeah and... Terry Pilkadaris, a man who's nice. played a lot of golf in Asia. Yeah. Although this, you know, is obviously in the Middle East. <laughs> but uh, Marcus Fraser will play a lot more this year. Marcus mm. is going to get back to playing some golf, having semi-retired to teach at Peninsula Kingswood. He's got the tour of professional itchy feet to get back out there. He's um, in the purses. These international series events, uh, two and a half million, two to two and a half million US dollars. Two and a half one, million dollars this which week. Is the live, so which is the live connection. The that live connection. Money which is coming from li- the, the money comes from live yep. to, to keep these along. Um, look, and of those Aussies, there's some genuine contenders in mm-hmm. there too. Wade Ormsby is a mm-hmm. very good player. Does he live again this year? Uh, yes, I believe he so. stayed in the league. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think most of the live contracts for the early players is for two years. Right. He's a ripper. Yeah, he, a ripper. He's yeah, not ripper. on ripper, is he? No, isn't he? That's the Australian team, isn't it? Ripper? That is the Australian team. Mm. I don't know. Have, to, okay. have to check my notes. It's a new new team name that's thrown me. Uh, Scott Hend is back playing some good golf, fighting people on Twitter, and that seems to make Scott mm. happy and <laughs> get him playing. Don't well. write him off. He's a any given week. Scott Hend can bob up and win a golf. Absolutely, ball. any given week. So Wade and Scott. Both having played these golf mm. courses a lot too, yeah. and experience counts around these sort of places. They'll be playing for a bit of cash in the practice rounds, the two of them as well. So it'll be, they'll be battle hardened by the time Thursday they will. rolls around. Yes, uh, Trav Smythe as well, who won on the Asian Tour last year and is really finding his feet as a touring pro, desperate to get the live spot mm. out of the international series order of merit, yep. separate order of merit to the Asian tour. Yep. I think Trav will play well this week. Jack Thompson is over there having won the Asian tour Q school a couple of weeks back. And John Lyris also gets in there via that, uh, uh, qualifying school. Oh, good to see. Which, really good to see. Both really nice young guys, both very impressive golfers. Cranbrook's John Lyris. Cranbrook's John Lyris, former cricketer who turned his hand to golf late. But he'd be, they'd both be looking for a good week as they get their years started out there and put some money in the bank to travel around and good week to do it. So for mind, it's a week for, for ball strikers around there. Uh, it's, it's, you need to be a, a proper hitter of the golf ball and Wade Ormsby is that. Mm. Yeah. Um, Wade can be inconsistent with his results a little it's bit. usually good for three rounds. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think for he, <laughs> my, that's, he's another one who can beat you up, I'm sure of it. Uh, Very but, professional, professional, Wade. Yeah. He oh, is. pro's pro. Yeah. Real pro's mm. pro. Yeah. 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 Another good moustache when he has it going. Mm. Uh, but no, he, Wade will be my pick this mm. week to take the trophy. Disappointingly, won't be the same old. Oyster shell. It'll be an international series trophy. We haven't which, seen it yet. Maybe it'll be better. They're all the same trophy. I'm pretty sure. Do you think? I think international so. series trophies. Ah, oh, of course. Yeah, they'd have that. Man, that's yeah. a shame. Okay. Yeah. We, my one criticism of the TPS series, which we talked about the Sin Sydney this week, not a fan of the trophy. Okay. I'd like to see something a little bit more exciting. Yeah, but find it. a link and we'll put that in the show notes so that we can show people what that is. I've, I can't think of it off the top of my head. TPS series. Okay. Logue, who do you like in Doha? Uh, I like Bio Kim. Yes. Uh, he's like after being released, the, the free Bio Kim <laughs> campaign. What year was that? From his that was what? Three 20, year ban. 2019. For giving it? an obscene gesture in a tournament that he won. <laughs> yes. He wins the tournament and then gets a three year ban. He was on his hands and knees begging his knees, for forgiveness. Yeah. It was amazing for And him. the free Bio Kim movement. <laughs> Uh, managed to get him his his sentence reduced to one year, and he's back on tour now, which is great to see. And I think he's gonna. <laughs> it just love a story of redemption. <laughs> yeah, it's a true redemption story. By Kim, good week. player, very good player, really good player. Played good on, play. Was he was he rookie of the year on the US tour one year? Not on the US tour, no. He played the PGA tour though. Uh, by Kim, I'm sure he did. I'm sure it's we can confirm that, that. We can confirm that next week. He's had pretty the, sure he did. some of the best years of his career taken away yeah. from him, cruelly snatched. Away Another player by the in Korean that same PGA in a, in the similar category is Sung Moon Bay, who's playing this week, who oh, did he? play on the PGA one tour. on the PGA one tour? on the PGA yeah. tour, yeah. and then went to do his high world ranking compulsory well. military Gosh. service, yeah. and hasn't been the same player since. No. But really good driver of the golf yeah. ball, Sung Moon Bay. Crucial time to lose a year for a golfer, isn't it? Where it was sometime between about twenty one and twenty four, I think. It's your prime. I, I, I spoke to Jen Hung Wang, who was the same, playing Europe, one in Europe, and he did his. I spoke to him at the Aussie PGA, and he didn't touch a golf club for yeah. his 18 months in there. Wow. He thought about golf every single day yeah. to get him through. So he, you know, you ask these people about military experience, and some say, oh, I was good, I got really fit. 
he absolutely hated every yeah. part of it. But he's a career and he knows he has to do it. And that's, yeah. yeah, Rod, have you got a pick for us that's going to surprise us? Or are you I don't going to surprise you, but my my pronunciation will be terrible. It particularly won't surprise you, Jimmy, young Japanese player Rio Hisatune. I'm going to say. Uh, who finished second at the Australian PGA back into last year. Bit of a funky action, moves the ball around, can play the game. And as you wrote in a column I discovered in my research, Clates gave him the thumbs up, said this kid can really play. You went out and watched him and you uh, agree with that. And that sort of player won't be held back forever. So based on that and a bit of a lack of knowledge of the rest of the field, really, I think this could be Rio's week. A, a really good player. Like, Really impressive and a rare Japanese player who's not an absolute top of their game superstar yet playing around the world yep. and actively wants to go and play all over the place, I think uh, which is really admirable. Yeah. We're seeing that generation, aren't we? And Hideki's probably the first of it to really play a lot outside of Japan. And Takumi Kanai has picked that up, as has Rio, and there's others. And I Yo. think you'll see from now on, as the Japanese tour itself is also somewhat shrinking. What is it? Rio. Rio. Oh, thank you. Rio. He's up um, to me. It's Hatsune. As we see the Japanese tour struggling a little bit financially and whatnot, you'll just as Australian players have to do, you'll see a lot more Japanese player venturing out into the world, and I don't think that'll be a bad thing. No, absolutely not. And was going to play the Sandbill Invitational last year, but end up going home. So maybe the Clayton Emanuel endorsement <laughs> was <laughs> drove him out of the drove country. him out of that country. <laughs> I, I saw him play uh, down in Melbourne as well, and you know he's good because he's one of those guys. He takes his sunnies off, and there's a very sharp uh, tan. Absolutely, he's know, done a lot, lot of, of work in the in yeah. the hot sun. Yeah. Absolutely. Also, okay. interestingly, in that field. Drew Love, son of Davis Love, one of the most maligned people on golf Twitter for his starts he's always had in PGA Tour events, and he gets an invite this week to play for a bit of And somebody pointed this out. It's interesting because um, Davis Love has been one of the most outspoken tour advocates and anti-Live, and of course, it's Live that are funding these international series events on the Asian Tour, and there's his son teeing up in did, one. Did so. he get So did Drew get passed over for being Davis the fourth? He is Davis the He's fourth. It's Drew is short for quadruple. Oh. Correct. Yes, exactly. And that is the right reaction. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I wish I'd never asked. Okay. Yes. I, 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 abso- you should wish <laughs> you I'd never asked. That is right. one of those. And so do, I don't know how many listeners we've got, but all of them will be wishing you'd never asked as well. Absolutely. I wish I'd never known that when I found it out as well. So that is all of the events we're covering this week, and we'll be covering them all on the Golf Australia magazine website, golfaustralia.com.au, where you'll get updates as to who's playing and who's had what scores and then who wins. You can find that out Sunday afternoon, Monday morning when that all comes to pass. Uh, There's also plenty of other news. Anything that happens in the world of golf happens on golfaustralia.com.au, where I must note uh, Rod wrote a great column about Justin Warren last week. So go on to the website and check that out. Justin Warren, who hits the ball unbelievable distances. Good player. Really good player. Good, good, what, a, good, what an attitude. Good player. Yeah, really yeah but good great attitude. attitude. Very good player. I think that's a big turning point that week last week. I couldn't agree more. That might end up being one of the most important weeks of his career. Same thing happened with Callum Shinkwin a couple of weeks beforehand in Europe. Played right. in the final group with Rory on Sunday, three over through four holes, and ended up shooting under par on the day. They're big moments because ultimately, once you get to the rarefied area in professional golf, it's got little to do with the golf swing and all to do with those experiences and what you've what you've stored up on the inside to get you through what are difficult moments. And that, I agree, that'll be a huge... Lost the playoff to Aaron Wilkin at the Queensland uh, PGA at the start of the year as well. That was a tough one to go through, losing one of his best mates who he travels with. Um, Really sort of transformative summer for Justin. Agree, Agree. a good player, but is Justin Warren the player we waited five minutes for to cross the fairway on the 15th at Concord that time? Yes, I believe it was. All Get right. on with it, Justin. He's got a lot to redeem himself for, for, for that. But <laughs> I will I, I will speak to him tomorrow and ask him you. to send you a personal apo- apology. Love your work, Justin. Get yeah. on with it. <laughs> yeah. Is that actually great play. Every player that's playing that's those true. events we've just covered, get on with it. We'll be this this show. We might become the bastions of quick. We're play. going to pick up where Andy Murr and Hazy left off at the Old Golf Australia podcast. What were they? The banister files for the slow players. That, was great. that was great stuff. Speaking of Hazy, we'll hopefully get him on maybe next week to entertain with his tips and mocking of everyone else who's involved. But that is episode one of playing from the tips, and we look forward to tracking how our tips go. And we'll see you next week where we'll tell you how they did go. 